Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Third Coast Reptile right here on YouTube. Today, we're going to be hanging out with a guy right behind me. He's the second smallest tortoise in the world, scientifically known as the Cistutus Clemeni. You know him as the Egyptian tortoise. All right, guys, here we are inside his enclosure, and he's going nuts in here. He's doing laps. Um, so a little bit of background, a little bit of history on these guys. They are uh, from the coastline of the Mediterranean Sea. They range from Israel all the way down to uh, Nigeria. In their native habitat, the Egyptian tortoise population is said to be around 7,500. Although through conservation and breeding efforts, the population in captivity is much greater. Some of the reasons why they are uh, dwindling in numbers in the wild is because of human development there in, the, in their natural habitat. You gotta imagine living on the coastline is kind of valuable real estate for us humans. So uh, when we started building roads, those roads had power lines, those power lines had birds on them. And those birds came down and swooped and grabbed the easy prey, which happened to be the Egyptian tortoises. That, and among the pet trade and other territorial predators, such as the uh, monitor, the reason why there's not so many in the wild to this day. But I have the fortunate opportunity of hanging out with Jafar, my Egyptian tortoise, right here in my reptile room. They are pretty pricey, though, if you plan on getting one. But... It's still feasible if it's your goal and you really want one. They're an excellent pet, and we're going to explain why now. So one of the things that makes the um, Egyptian tortoise a desirable tortoise is the fact that they stay relatively small. In fact, males only get up to about 5 inches in diameter, where the females get a little bit larger at 8 inches. Um, and that makes them easy for apartments as well as houses. You can see I have them in the old, good old Rubbermaid container that I use quite often here in the reptile room. But, um, you know, being on that size, it makes them favorable. In addition to that, um, they are pretty friendly tortoises. You can see Jafar is very, very, uh, active today, uh, mid afternoon, which is uncommon for him, but he is just, he's making the rounds here and He's running around here. Look at this guy go. Um, Egyptian tortoises really enjoy grasses, uh, leafy greens, and uh, flowers. So they're uh, kind of opportunistic in the wild. Uh, here in captivity, though, this good old spring mix is what works best for him. In fact, when I first got him, uh, I really wanted him to make sure he ate, and I gave him some Missouri diet, and that was it. He was just hooked on Missouri diet and I, it took me forever to get him off of it. Uh, but we got him off it and he's back to regular greens now and, uh, you know, being healthy, eating your greens. So their lifespan is typically from 75 to a hundred years, even in captivity. So they live an awful long time. You better make sure that you have some sort of, uh, plans for them after you're gone. So that way you can ensure they have a good home and somebody that you can trust with these guys. 
Um, and in fact, from hatchling after five years, they're actually ready to be uh, reproducing. So uh, it doesn't take long for them to become full adults. Tortoises, when they uh, lay eggs, will tend to lay one to two eggs uh, per hat uh, per clutch, and they tend to have two to three clutches per year. All right, so let's talk substrate here. Uh, in here in the enclosure, I have a compound of uh, a composite of sand, rocks, and oyster shell, and this is sort of what they would see in the wild, but they would also uh, see uh some like really arid grasses and dry bushes and stuff like that it's just it's a predominantly low humidity environment and i replicate that here in the enclosure however that doesn't mean that i don't spray down the enclosure because in the wild they would actually see like a morning dew or a morning mist coming from the ocean so they do get a damp period of the day the important thing is with your substrate and your cycle that you spray the enclosure in is you want to make sure it has a chance to dry out throughout the day. You don't want to leave the area so damp and so humid that they actually don't have a chance to dry out and the ground doesn't have a chance to actually get dry as well. So it's very important that you, you do it first thing in the morning. You spray down. If you have a timer, it would be a good idea to set it for like an AM, so just before the lights turn on, maybe have it spray, and then once your lights turn on, it gives it an opportunity to drain and dry out as well. All right, so what I've done here for decor in his enclosure is this, I've sort of given him areas that he can shelter and hide, and you want to do that for him for a few reasons. One, uh, it allows him shade from the basking bulbs that I have here and over here, but also it makes them feel a little bit more comfortable and secure having the central hide here, which is just a cork bark round, which is right there. And then I have a couple leafy areas where he can hide underneath in several spots uh, throughout the enclosure. And then, of course, this water dish, which is dirty. I need to clean that. And then a basking spot over there on the far end. So he has options in here from a cooler side to the warmer side and of course that's a uh, mercury vapor bulb that does both UVB and UVA and it's a basking spot as well. Uh, the temperatures inside this enclosure uh, range anywhere from 80 degrees to a little over 100 degrees over there on the hot spot where he's walking over on that side. So you give him options, you give him places uh, to hang out, you got the site barriers that I like. He likes to explore and do laps around here, as you've seen. And that is the extent of my setup. So you've decided that you want to get an Egyptian tortoise? Well, that's going to be an issue. Uh, they are very hard to get. And most of the time, when they're advertised, it usually ends up being a scam. Um, they're hard to get. you got to find a reputable breeder. you got to find somebody that you can do some research on to make sure they're legitimate. And some of the ways that you can do that is find out from friends if they've heard of the person, uh, check out their social media and see if they've had some bad reviews, find out from other people, um, you know, that have bought from that person, make sure you find them on a trusted website. Um, these are high dollar guys and you don't want to risk it, um, you know, on some third party website that doesn't have an actual address and, you know, the guy's advertising it with like six different pictures from six different area and locations. So be careful when you're looking for these guys because they are a hot commodity and scammers are everywhere.
Well, all right, guys, he's gonna keep doing his laps here, just doing normal exercise during the day, getting his cardio in, which is what I ought to do. Uh, but anyway, I just wanna say thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out today. Uh, this is a fun video. I like hanging out with the Egyptian tortoise and uh, spending some time with this little guy. You can tell he's a little guy with a big personality, Jafar. Anyway, thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.